Hey folks, it's Matt Zachary and welcome to Vax On, a brand new weekly segment of my podcast Out of Patience right here on the Offscript Media Network. Hey, I'm Alora Nanos. I'm a lawyer, a journalist, a mom of a teenage narcoleptic and a professional big mouth. Lou and I go back 30 years as best friends and we're here to have fun and bring you a layperson's guide to what the hell just happened this week in healthcare as America gets its vax on and shows COVID the door. Matt gets me. He knows I'm tired, annoyed, and sometimes pushed to the brink by the intense chaos of our lives right now. We're here together to learn, complain, and include you in the conversation. So join us on Twitter at VaxOnPod and share your stories and grievances using the hashtag VaxOn. Conspiracy theorists and haters shall be neutralized on site. All right, Matt, let's get at it. Welcome back. It's another exciting episode of Vax On. Elora Nanos here with me. Hey, Matt, good to see you. Oh, my goodness. How was your week? We both got vaccinated last Friday. How did you do? We had some drama, good drama, perhaps. I had my second shot. By comparison, it was less horrible than my first shot, where I was under a blanket for 48 straight hours. I didn't eat. I didn't sleep. I didn't shower. Nothing it was disgusting. And then like Monday morning, I'm like, oh, where'd the weekend go? This was different because my arm hurt way much more. I only had aches and pains, and I was only tired for maybe 18 hours. But it's we're recording this on a Tuesday, and my arm kind of still hurts from Friday. But hey, good problem to have, right? Yeah, you're functional, right? Yeah. You? Uh, so I got the shot also like you on Friday and, um, Friday night I died and then <laughs> I was dead all day Saturday and, um, and then I woke up Sunday, like nothing ever happened. It was like the Easter miracle of the COVID shot. It was bizarre. The way I had the symptoms on Saturday, it was so strange. First I had a really bad fever and then I had chills and then I had aches, but I had each of these things for like a short period of time. So at one point I had horrible abdominal cramps, but only for like 20 minutes. Then after that, I had nausea for 20 minutes. Then after that, I had chills for 20 minutes. It felt like, you know, when you plug in your router and you go through each of the the lights go on and off, right? <laughs> it was like that. Like my immune system, like checked every system, fucked it up for a minute and then came back. You were your own pharma commercial side effects part. I, I literally had every single possible side effect that you could have for like squished really badly into like half an hour. And then it was gone. Like, it never happened. It was so odd. But here we are. But here, I'm thrilled. Fully vaccinated. Ready to go. What does it incubate? Like, another 10 days or something for it to be, like, fully I think they said three up? weeks. Three Th weeks? Yeah, I think it was, like, three weeks. But, hey, I mean, I, I'm sure it's you know, works to some degree, even from the first shot. And then, you know, it, it kind of slowly ramps up for a few weeks until you become fully immune or as immune as you can be. So I called my, my GP, who had been putting me on this um, all right, nerd alert. It's a longitudinal uh, antibody shedding study. What that means in syllables is that I had COVID a year ago. I got tested for antibodies and they measured the number of antibodies that I had. It was a random number. Can I know where the longitudinal part <laughs> came in? Did you well, have to do it on a ladder or like it, with a I map? I did it every six weeks and went back for the blood test to see if that magic 58, which meant nothing, was just 58. 58 what? Parsecs. I have no idea. It could be anything. 58 gigawatts. <laughs> yes. 50 IgG somethings. Whatever. And I maintained the number 58 for like seven months. So I told them I'm going to go get the vaccine. And they said, well, we're curious to see if you have a reaction because you already have known loads of antibodies inside you. Sure. So they were curious to see if I would have any reaction to the shot. Because I already had an existing load of antibodies that had been maintained consistently for many, many months. And I had the massive reaction I just talked about the first time and the one I had this weekend. And I, I sent them a note today. And they said to me, and I don't know if this is like, sorry, not sorry, but like, well, a strong reaction means a strong immune system. Yeah. And that's what I'm hearing too, right? A strong reaction means a strong immune system. And it's one of the reasons why some of the older people I'm hearing about are getting hardly any reaction from the vaccine. Anecdotally, I'm hearing maybe that's because their immune systems are just naturally a little bit weaker. So their immune system is not kicking into high gear. So I'm not going to claim the mantle of Wolverine, but <laughs> I kind of feel good. If it is inversely proportional to how weak you're not, 
Yeah, I just that messed is a up good that thing, math. right? Yeah, it's a good thing. It's very interesting that I, I was saying to someone, I mean, I felt really crappy uh, the day that I was dealing with all my symptoms, but I thought it was really interesting that from a kind of psychological standpoint, I felt really different. And I think it was like, I knew I wasn't really sick and I knew that it was some kind of a good sign. So even though I physically felt terrible, mentally, I was sort of happy about it. And somehow that affected my just overall mood about being sick. I didn't have that praying for death kind of feeling that I usually have when I have the flu. So speaking of which, we talked about this on the last show. There's no flu anymore. Bye flu. I know. It's, and it's, you know, it, I think I'm going to wear a mask during flu season forever because the flu is horrible. And I think it's amazing. There's been like no flu deaths this year. I mean, not that I'm normally worried about death from the flu, but the flu is terrible. And, um, Hey, I mean, if we maybe we can kick the flu's ass too while we're dealing with this pandemic. Well done. I don't know if you've seen this around, but they're calling what's going on right now kind of emotionally. They're referring to it as the pandemic wall, that all of us have been just dealing with this whole thing for so long that we're all at this emotional place where we've just had it. And, and I feel like almost everyone I talk to, the first thing that they say is, oh, I'm so over it. I'm so over this. So, you know, different people, I think, have different ways of coping with just the emotional toll of not being around family, not having anything to do, no restaurants, no fun plans. And, um, and I always like whenever I'm talking to anybody to say, well, what are you doing? What are you and your family doing to deal with it? Because if I can pick something up, you know, great. So, Matt, what, do you, what are you guys doing to, to kind of deal with this time? Well, I think this could be potentially controversial oh, to discuss. Oh, I love controversial. Maybe not. I don't know. It depends on what the listeners say. You can always tweet me at VaxOnPod and uh, tell me whether I'm an asshole or not. Please do that, guys. Yes. Yes. Elora just goaded you on to do just that. We're taking a vacation. Our first one in four years. I mean, if we get pandemic, we just have not been on a vacation in four years. The last one was Disneyland, which was a great trip. But at the same time, you know, it's been a long time. And we've decided that since I'm vaccinated, my wife is vaccinated, uh, you know, we have young kids that are largely unaffected. There's been virtually no transmission data of anything horrible based on airplane traffic. I mean, there's the jerks that kick off the flight for not wearing masks. We will clearly follow the rules, but we're taking a trip um, for a week uh, to a resort that I had all these crazy points for, so it's not costing us a ton of money. Just a quick little nice. lovely privileged life hack. Wonderful. But we get to go away on our own and just be alone for the four of us not in our apartment in July, which, again, even is still four months from now. But we're looking forward to it, and I think that's the thing. We have the something planning. to look forward to. I, I agree. I'm a huge planner. For me, things like vacation planning um, and reading travel magazines and planning parties and just planning anything is something that I always do and it soothes me. It's one of the things that I've missed the most during this time because not having anything to plan for makes me very anxious. Mm -hmm. it, th that's where I put my energy normally. My family's also planning a vacation. We're all vaccinated and we're planning a vacation that is a mostly outdoors vacation, but we will go on a plane and uh, I'll report back and <laughs> tell you how the plane was also. But I also have another thing that we've been doing to combat this time when there is literally nothing to do. Like we've done hiking and kayaking and that's all wonderful, but it's freezing cold outside. Right. So we needed something else to do. And I have to tell you, sometimes the answers lie in just the most unexpected places. Was it under the sink? No, it was not. It was definitely not under the sink. So my husband and I started doing puzzles. <laughs> like jigsaw puzzles? Adult Jig jigsaw or like the ones with like seven blocks not, like kids? I mean, not like adult jigsaw <laughs> Oh, those, yeah. Oh, no. Let's use the word appropriately. Yeah. No, like like thousand piece jigsaw puzzles. Wow. Now here's a, this sounds crazy, right? I have not done a jigsaw puzzle since I was probably ten. And if we're being honest, these are not my things. I don't like crafts. I don't like building things. I, I'm just not really a very visual person, so I'm not generally doing stuff like this. But something made us start to do like these kind of social jigsaw puzzles. And it has blossomed into such a fun activity. We make charcuterie, we pour some wine, we sit around and we do jigsaw puzzles, but only when the puzzle shows something that we are super interested in looking at. So right now, my whole family, kids and everything, we're doing a puzzle of Ireland and it's got all the landmarks and fun monuments of Ireland. 
And I swear, every time I sit down and do it, it makes me just want to go there. And I think that's the next trip I'm planning. Isn't that weird? It's weird. You're looking at me like I'm crazy. I know because it's weird, but somehow it works. Maybe it's the wine. I don't know. Hey, uh, your guilty <laughs> pleasure of choice is your choice. Isn't that weird? <laughs> On that note, we'll be right back after we pay some bills. Has your chronic illness made it difficult to continue working in the traditional way? Want to learn how to find and create flexible remote work that both accommodates your chronic illness and generates an income? Join the Patients Getting Paid membership, a community of chronicpreneurs where people just like you find workshops and trainings, weekly updated condition-specific gigs, twice-monthly coaching calls, co-workings, accountability, and the kindest community to support you on your path to make money while working from anywhere and taking good care of yourself. Learn more or join us at patientsgettingpaid.com. So in lieu of our second segment, which is normally fucker, we were going to say, really, mom? And I'll start with you, Lou. Yeah. So I was talking to my adorable sweet mom yesterday who drops on me for the first time since the beginning of the pandemic that she's pretty sure she had COVID last March. Now, and for the first time, she says, you know, and I lost my sense of smell and taste, too, for like five days. And I was really sick for five days. And I said, Mom, why didn't you ever mention that? And she said, oh, well, I, I told my doctor and I asked if I should get an antibody test. And they said there weren't any available last March. And I said, Mom, you know, if you had just mentioned it to me, eventually we could have gotten you an antibody test and we probably could have seen you this whole time. And she was like, oh, I guess so. Really? Yeah. What am I supposed to do with this? I'm sure I'm sure I'm not the only one with wacky family stories. Well, I have a wacky family story, but this was not something that anyone actually wanted to have happen. But it is very endemic of the narrative today about protections and hospitals. My mom was rushed to the ER on Saturday. Uh, long story short, she's fine. She's 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 fine. It was a uh, it was scary, but she was had to stay overnight after her procedure. Which again, she's fine. Love you, mom. I know she listens, and. What was the most upsetting thing for me, and I don't know if having an answer to this one would feel better, but in the moment, my poor dad, they both been vaccinated, but my poor dad was not able to be with her in the hospital. They still restricted her to just being alone in her room. And it bothers me because I guess the rhetoric is if you both been vaccinated and your family members, what's the whole point then if you can't be with each other in a hospital vaccinated with masks on. So it, it was meaningless? Like it, the fact that he could prove that he had been vaccinated had no bearing on anything? And they did a COVID test on her when she got there and she was negative and showed them on her phone the CDC card that she took a photo of. It meant nothing. Do you think that that's just sort of because, you know, these rules are developing, you know, we're sort of building this plane as it's in the air right now and that's why that hasn't happened? Because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, the situation you're talking about, that the hospital would really not allow family members to be together when, from a medical standpoint, there sounds like there's every reason that it would be pretty safe for them to be together. If this were grief, I'd be in bargaining right now, if not grief per se. <laughs> but the bargaining I have is, yeah, it's probably too soon for that to haven't even been calculated as a thing. This notion of the vaccine passport, which I think we're going to discuss later in the show, they're doing it in Israel. They're doing it in Europe. Like, how do you prove you've had it with a government issued ID card? But just because it's there, what does it get you? What are the benefits of having this? And one of them should at least be that if your spouse is in the ER, you should be able to be next to them with a mask on. I mean, considering that before COVID, we pretty much allowed whoever the hell you had to be in the hospital, regardless of whatever medical condition they had. Right. And COVID is not the first communicable disease. So, you know, in the past, your spouse goes to the hospital and you have, I don't know, tuberculosis or syphilis or whatever nonsense you could have. They're, you know, they're not keeping you away from the person's bedside. So it's no. a little crazy it in is. a situation now, even though COVID's out there and it's certainly a concern, you've both been vaccinated. It's like, you know, in some ways, the best case scenario that you have actual proof that, you know, it's a little safer for you than it might be for someone else. All right. But here's what's even more absolutely egregiously stupid. So what happened to my mom this weekend also happened to her seven months ago. 
in the heart of the pandemic, like last summer. And they allowed my dad to be with her. I, th the first time they the allowed The first time. What the fuck? All right, I, I know, I get it, I get it. We're moving targets and there's no standard and it's been structured chaos theory at its finest moments. But still, I hope that whatever version of a COVID passport is issued in this country means at least one thing, that if your loved one is in the hospital, you can be with them. I mean, if it doesn't mean that, then it's some platinum level stupidity. So, yeah, well, let, let's put that on the list first. Let, okay. Let's check back in on that to make sure that that gets done. Yes. Put it on your to-do list, will you? Anyone listening from the CDC or Med Twitter, let's get on this. Yeah. So there was some news this week that we just had to throw into this segment. It's not really what the fuckery or really, mom. It's like it's it's such a throwback of weirdness for us. Elure and I were both in the marching band in high school because reasons and why not. <laughs> There's this story in the news from Washington State, a small town Wenatchee, that their high school students in the marching band wanted to practice indoors, but they found these like little hyperbaric TP zip. Well, I, how would you describe they them? Look, you know what they look like? They look like those tents that kids play in. Like, you know, you zipper around it. It's like a stand-up tent. But it's clear, so you can see the conductor. Yeah, but it's clear. It's like, right, like it's like a little pod kind of thing. It was bizarre. So we'll put a link in the description because you just have to see this if you didn't see it. And if you were a band geek, you laugh your fuck off because it's hysterical. Oh, it's fantastic. It's tragically hysterical. Oh, I think it's wonderful. I saw it. It was crazy, right? So you see the whole band and each person is in their own little individual pod. But they play together and then the sound carries. So I'm sure that the intonation is not like exactly right. And you see the poor guy with the sousaphone. It's like taking up the entire pod. Yeah, the, the bell of the sousaphone is like cracking through the top of it. That poor kid. But you know what I love, though? I, I remember and, and you remember this too, Matt. When we were in the marching band, I mean, we literally, we played in freezing cold temperatures. We played in boiling hot temperatures. We played in uncomfortable uniform. We painted in the rain. We In the rain, in, in the, the snow. snow, in the sleet. <laughs> yeah. like, I mean, it was like literally. It was unforgiving. It was really unforgiving. And, and we didn't complain about it. It was like. In the same velour, disgusting outfit. Absolutely. That had not been washed since 1976. Yes, exactly. And it, we played at four o'clock in the morning sometimes. Yes. And in airplane hangars other times. I mean, it was crazy, yeah. right? No mercy. No, no mercy. Absolutely not. And you know what? It was fine. And although I remember all of those crazy circumstances, I loved being there with everybody. And I bet these kids feel the same way. So I feel like bravo to the school for figuring out some way that these kids can still make music and have their fun together and do an activity. It's safe. It's responsible. I think it's great. Marching band COVID life hack. I love it. I want to see them. I want to see these kids in the Thanksgiving Day Parade on a float in the pods. Yes. Yes, like little minions floating down from family. I, I want the flagpole for the flag twirlers to be stuck through through the pod, <laughs> waving it up there. That would be fantastic. My God, what a great story. What a great Good story. Good job, guys. Matt, one of the things that I really wanted to talk about with you is the problem that we're all experiencing. And, you know, it's so interesting. We've been doing this just for a couple of weeks, but it's almost like each week in the, the collective ether, we're all going through the same thing all the time. So now that people are starting to get vaccinated, now the question we're all asking is, now that I've been vaccinated, now what? What are the rules for me? You know, most people, I think, want to be responsible, but it's really tough to be responsible when you don't know what the rules are. So how do we deal with that? There's a disturbing allegory here to the cancer world, which is I'm done with treatment. Now, what do I do? And there typically are no guardrails or handrails to hold on to. And you're at the mercy of hoping that you stumble upon the right ways to live your life based on what just happened to you. I think that's really stressful, you know, and, and I think that we've all been through this incredibly stressful time and everybody is on the page that we want to do what's healthiest, but knowing what that even looks like is so difficult. And, you know, so this show is dropping on Thursday, which is the same day that the CDC is supposed to let us know what the new protocols are for people who have been vaccinated. Now, you know, I love the CDC, 
But in the past, they don't exactly have the perfect track record for giving me guidance that is easy to follow and clear and doesn't conflict with itself. It's the CDC when not enough syllables are too good for you. (laughs) So, I mean, we'll see what they say. What we do know is that they've already said and that they're likely to say again, which is getting a vaccine doesn't mean you can just go back to normal, right? You're not going to just take off the mask and start having giant parties and go to rock concerts. It, All right, it's scratching that. that off my list. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, as much as we would love to. You know, right now they're saying in groups, still wear a mask, still socially distance when you can. Well, the data suggests that your body may be immune to the virus, but your body may still somehow carry the virus. It's not going to hurt you in any way, but you could somehow exhale it into somebody else who has not been vaccinated. The, the jury's out. Maybe it's not, but from what I'm reading, what have you read? I've read the same thing, which is, you know, signs point to the fact that there's going to be reduced transmission for someone who's been vaccinated, but the vaccine hasn't been around long enough for them to really know, well, how reduced? Does it eliminate transmission? Does it reduce it just by a a small degree? How much does it really eliminate it? The only thing that I'm seeing that's really definitive is if you're talking about two people, both of whom have been vaccinated, both of whom have had both vaccinations and have waited the three weeks afterwards, that you should be okay to be with those people. So for many of us, that means, hey, now we can see our immediate family again, which is really great. Yeah. And I I think that the CDC and other medical authorities are walking a really fine line here because they want to make sure that people are still being careful. And, and that people aren't being irresponsible just because they got a vaccine. But at the same time, they've got to be careful because if they don't make it sound like you get something from getting vaccinated, then what the hell's the point of being vaccinated? Another issue is that science is always supposed to be trying to prove itself wrong. They're always chasing the right. And until there is no right in science, there's theories, there's proofs. And then there might be real world evidence to support that this is concrete. But the whole point is, like they used to say, don't wear masks. So then they said, only give masks to the elderly. Now everyone has to wear masks. And then they're, they're yelling, like, why did you confuse us? Like, they just didn't know. Then they said two masks. And then people got pissed off that it was two masks. And right. said, I don't want mask. And right. do I have to wear two masks after I'm not vaccinated? Can I and reduce my mask? And a tinfoil hat. <laughs> the tinfoil hats are coming, folks. Anything they're dropping on Thursday is subject to change. Yeah. It's not dogma. It's recommendations in the moment of the evidence they have. Right. And, and I think you have to think about it that way. I think we should all be looking for that information Thursday in the same way that in the beginning of COVID, we were sort of really looking at the state mandates and, and group sizes and all that kind of stuff. Now we're more looking at, OK, well, what are the recommendations for people who have been vaccinated? And I do expect that that's going to change. You know, I hope that at a minimum, it's going to mean that, you know, we can do certain kinds of indoor gatherings without distancing and without masks at some point. But, you know, we'll wait to see what they say. Speaking of travel. Yes. This hope of a return to some version of what normalcy will be. Let's talk about one of the administration's executive orders aimed at curbing the pandemic. It's the feasibility of linking your vaccine certificates, those pieces of paper that you could just make up in Photoshop into something a little more official from the government. That would be nice. Yeah, be nice. Like an app, a digital app, a digital version of some government app that you can flash on your phone, TSA, at a bar, at a hotel, something to encourage, let's get out of our houses and go somewhere. Here's the thing, right, with that. You know that if that happens and there becomes some kind of universal digital vaccine passport, you know, sort of like your global entry number or TSA number or something, Mm -hmm. you know that the next thing that's going to happen is lawsuits against whoever wants to see that vaccine for whatever activity you're doing. Right. It's not necessarily an easy question because once that exists, then someone's going to want to see it. And as soon as someone wants to see it, somebody's going to complain that someone else wants to see it. That's the lawyer in you. Well done. Yeah. Like I can't wait for the class action lawsuits about that. Um, But did you hear this news about the airlines? Go ahead. So this is fascinating. I just read this today. So did you know that there's this organization called the IATA? Don't ask me what it stands for. I'm not good with acronyms. International Air Transport Association. I read that. Right. That's what I said. Off the paper. Yeah. Sorry. sorry. I'm not that smart. I missed it. It I only looked at the bold print. So (laughs) this is a trade organization of airlines. And it, it seems like it encompasses like most of the airlines. It's 290 airlines. And this organization is saying that maybe it will come up with the digital app. 
Now, this is very interesting to me because what it's saying is, look, we're not the government. Um, you know, this is not a, a situation where it would be mandated at all. But it's a service that they're thinking of providing where they will provide some type of vaccine passport for the purpose, obviously, of making it just kind of seamless for people to travel. And what it will do is be easy for you to show that you've been vaccinated, but then also be easy for you to get updated and correct and reliable information about what's happening in the country that you're going to. So in other words, it's a two-way street that, you know, you can show your vaccine info that you've been vaccinated, but then you can also find out what's going to be required when you get wherever you're going. I feel like this will make them create a third class of seats in the back that are tarped off with dunce caps. Yeah, like non the non-vaccine. <laughs> the non-vaccine the section of the back. Can we put them in the back? Because here's the thing. I don't understand. I So I'm, I'm 46 years old. I've been on a lot of airplanes. What is it exactly that you have to do? to not be in the back of the plane. <laughs> so I understand first class is in the front, yeah. but I have never booked a seat that is ever in the front few rows. Who gets those seats? You're like row 38 and back. Always, yeah. always, always, always. And then it takes the people for fucking ever to get off the plane. Wait, unless you've been on the plane with a back door. You've been on those planes? No. There are some planes with a back door that let you exit on the tarmac I have never, out of the back door. I have not seen this. All I know is that every airplane flight I ever take I spend at least 20 minutes wondering how the people in the front don't know that they should hustle their asses off the plane. Hurry up. It's like getting on and off the subway. It's, Do it fast. Yeah, take your time. It makes me irate. Yeah, but at least you're vaccinated. <laughs> yes, at least I'm vaccinated. Always look on the bright <laughs> side of life. Exactly, exactly. I'm going to get to see my family and now I can invite my parents to come over and join us in Puzzle Mania. Well done. <laughs> so if there's the IATA, I want the MATA, which is the Matthew Trade Association, that's going to create club nights and bar nights and special events. And you must show your government issued United Airlines JetBlue card to get in. And I'm going to start an entire bouncers union to guard the doors and let people in like a nightclub on 90210 in the 90s. <laughs> you got to be this old to get in here. Show me your Spirit Airlines TSA approved <laughs> vaccine card. What could go wrong? Please don't let Spirit do it, though. <laughs> They'll make you do it yourself and charge you extra. All right. Not Spirit. No, but you know, that actually good point, though. You think that's going to happen? We're going to end up going to like speakeasies and instead of a password at the door, it's going to be like show your vax card at the door. What a great idea. Come on. I mean, is it's it not like like a prohibition where they can knock on the door and say, hey, give us your non vaccines. You know what will happen, though? Anytime people are asked that, somebody's going to get pissed off. So you're going to end up with people protesting outside saying that it's taking their rights away, even though they have no right to be in the bar in the first place. They had no right to do lots of things that people would well, just about. go get vaccinated. But you come on in. It, it's you would think it's easy, but people who don't want to get vaccinated or people who just want to complain, people don't like being told what to do. Like, that's the issue. They don't like being told what to do. Freedom. <laughs> Listen, all I know is. I was never, when I went to get my vaccine, it was like a party in the place. There yeah. were people in costumes, there was music playing. It was great. I, it was I, great. I, it was almost like you you felt joy for the first time in oh, society. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it was like, I understood that what I was doing was going to help me. And, you know, we've spent all this time for all these months being kind of fed this double edge, like do this, wear the mask because it protects you, but really it protects somebody else. Right. And I kind of feel like, no, the vaccine protects me. I'm going to take it because it protects me. And then I don't fucking have to worry about you. Amen. Exactly. All right. Wrapping up this episode of Vaxon here today at the Offscript Media Studios live in Manhattan because we are vaccinated and I can physically see you. <laughs> I love seeing you. So good to be here, Matt. All right. Stay tuned. True Believers onward for next week. Go get your puzzles. That's all for today, folks. If you like today's show, the conversation continues on Twitter at VaxonPod. That's V-A-X-O-N pod. Be sure to subscribe, leave a review, and tell all your friends to listen. Vaxon is a product of Offscript Media. Our executive producers are Matthew Zachary and Alora Nanos. Our senior producers are Brianna Seeley and Andrew McDowell. It is mixed and edited by Brianna Seeley. Our theme music is by Chair Model. For advertising and media inquiries, email media at offscript.com. Hit us up at contact at offscript.com to share comments, feedback, and make recommendations. For more information, visit offscript.com.
www.thepowerofpositivelifestyle.com.